Hello and welcome. Today is the 31st day of July 2017. My name is Derek and welcome to the Palladium video for today. Multiple time frames, the daily, the four hour, the weekly, and the monthly charts. And I was interested very much so as the uh, months ended May into June within this move from about 750 up to about 900 as it was indicating a lot of interesting things and we're going to be seeing it on the other time frames but i was thinking to myself man i really should be buying some palladium and i'm kind of, kind of scared but not really to buy some as the one fear i have is you buy palladium it could be counterfeit the silver instead of palladium I mean, I don't fear buying fake silver because someone puts palladium in it because it's worth so much more for like the obvious reasons. But as far as this, it could be a concern. However, when you're buying a Canadian maple, palladium, silver, or, well, palladium round rather, and you're getting it from a reputable source, then you, that takes those worries away. So I was thinking here. Okay, maybe I should wait for a decline, probably down to around 8.30, which is where it went to. And it's interestingly enough because one of the areas in which I was buying silver was right in here. And, well, I could have bought palladium there. I was thinking, do I buy palladium? I have 0 0.000 ounces of such, and I have a lot of silver in the point... Do I really need to add more? I'm liking its upside, but I did pass. And whether I regret it, I don't know. I'm probably going to find ways later of getting some again. But let's move this time frame out. Looking at the shorter term, the four-hour time frame, then we'll switch to the weekly. And this one has the uh, happy face, bowl-shaped formation within its uh, sideways correction. It's been doing very, very well as far as holding this uptrend so far. It's, I think, looking to break even the resistance point of it. Uh, maybe not. But again, it's up to this point. So you can say, ooh, it's a little overextended. It's now at this previous resistance area. And if we draw a rectangular in here that connects this point to the previous resistance area, then you can make a case for it here. But even this point, because a congested resistance more at this line in here around the 20th, in the 20th days between on here. So therefore, it's at that level where it just may want to pull back, but it could easily keep going a little higher before that pullback happens. Really, no way of knowing, but if the market's going to come back to where it came from, this is where I would state, at least in the crypto business, if I was looking at this, if I really wanted to get in and I don't want to pay market price, no, I'd probably put a buy order right around here. That's what I would do if I was looking at a chart like this as a trader. Let's uh, span this out to the uh, weekly now. And it's a, a very interesting, um, volatile chop designed or chart designed for the strategy that I like, which is just keep on placing sell orders a little higher and then try to buy it back a little cheaper, which means you sell order here, you try to buy back here. You sell here, you try to buy back somewhere in here and then you buy here you sell here you sell here you buy here and just keep on doing that and this is a type of chart where it works pretty much to perfection or gives you extreme gains if you can find it but that's how it is now it's obviously going to change when it's ready to do so the key message of the market here for me is here's the resistance area feel from 2014 that had a very large correction in both price and time and it managed to bottom roughly at around uh, a little north of 450 at the uh, start of 2016. And it has been going ever since. Now has managed to get up to 900 or basically has doubled its gain. Now what it hasn't had is any major correction. And I define major correction as the 18 average band 
going sideways, then going lower, and then having at least one decent leg lower within. That, that hasn't happened because if I'm drawing an uptrend line, I, I, I can do such with it still in place. There we have it. Easy uptrend line. So you can say there's been no major corrections in that type of form, but there obviously, when you look at it, has been several extreme short-term corrections and each one, well, big green candles after. Here to here, look at the greens up. And then you have here to here, big greens up again. Here to here, big green up again. These ones weren't as, weren't as big, but neither were the up moves. And then here, breaking down below the 18 average of lows, big move. And you can all, every single time it's done that, every single time it's went below this 18 average of lows, there's one, two, three, four, five times that it managed to have its extreme gain. Now the story's a little different now. Instead of having a huge splash scary move below the 18 average of lows, it rather congested at the 18 average of highs, which was rising, thus it was in a rising trend where it was making higher highs and higher lows as we can see like this. So that's a different story. You could almost state that it's going to set up a very bullish move in itself as well. As before, the sellers were more aggressive when they were dishing out from these points. We're obviously not as so in here. And it took, it didn't get, it, the buyers waited for the uh, bigger moves before they would uh, pump the market up higher. And now they didn't wait for as big as big of a move, and it looks like they're starting to pump it up at this stage now. And when you have this point of resistance, it's likely you're gonna find some resistance a second time, and it did. So now the chances of it resisting again is not as strong. And when we move this on to the monthly chart, we'll get another interesting picture. And that was some pretty sick moves that have occurred. So when we look at what history tells us or what previous situations occurred, when this thing gets going, the possibilities could be mammoth. In 2009, all it did was go from 160 up to 850. That's in the realm of what cryptocurrencies have been doing. And when we look at this market, compared to like silver and gold, but definitely mainly silver, it almost seems as if those whom have been trying to uh, suppress the price of the precious metals really don't do much effort into suppressing palladium. And Whereas in silver, they put extreme effort into doing such. That's just something that I think might be uh, one of the situations or possibilities. But these kinds of moves in free markets, quite frankly, you're more likely to have them happen like this. Especially when prices get out of hand. But the possibilities of breaking a thousand and going to like four, five, six doesn't seem really out of the realm of possibilities given what we have seen. Now, as far as the chart analysis is concerned from this move higher, I mean, do you really want to buy in this stage? Because it's like, oh my goodness, I just can never, ever, ever, ever be a buyer on something when, at this point, ever. But you can see that, oh, you don't buy here, you have a chance to buy here, you have a chance to buy here, you have a chance to buy here, and you want to wait for the market to correct and settle in. Okay, so it's been uh, seven years where it's just been going sideways. And after its original establishment, which ended up being 850, it has a test in here, piercing above, but it, to me, it's a higher high, but it's a matching high, as far as I'm concerned. And then 
technically this is a lower low it's not a matching low and you could say failed move not really too too much of a fast move but kind of and this is to the point i would expect it to but it's also test number three of this 850 mark which then increases the chances it takes it out we can see just looking at the last three periods of the situation the third previous final one a move to the 18 average of highs back higher the previous period it rallied to this point but came back and it's breaking higher so there's really no real need for a correction at this stage given that point of view it seems as if the most logical situation is a move to previous high in the 1100 area I'm not only saying that because markets usually go to those kinds of key points after it's been a long decline in both price and or time, and in this case, a big and. But it also represents, if you're going to break something like this, you know what, a move of this type of size would be about the size of move I would expect. So therefore, the most probable situation or how I would predict it if I was in a contest and I was trying to do the best I could was bet that it goes up here, comes back to 850, markets come back to where they came from. Then at this stage, it would probably take it out on its next move, albeit maybe having some sideways correction on its next test at 11 or a smaller higher low something like that but that's what i would predict that it would be a good chance it breaks resistance up to 11 and then pulls back between 850 and 9. overall though there seems to be a lot of good reasons on a tangible level for so many reasons supply demand physical usage and of course the fiat currency debasco fiasco i should be stating are major reasons then you throw of course chart analysis showing how volatile these moves can actually result towards there are a lot of good reasons why one would uh, want to invest in the physical commodity and i really emphasize such i don't know why one would want to play this I, I don't call it the paper game i call it the digital electronic type game that's uh regulated by of course uh banking systems but Physical metals in your possession are, are real metals produced by like the solar system and the earth and well, not the earth, but the whole universe and all that type of stuff. That's real physical uh, a commodity used in real applications that is limited in quantity that is very difficult and expensive to mine. So there's a lot of good reasons uh, to uh decide yes i want to get into such and i hope i've helped in any of your analysis at least uh providing what information i can and what i know so thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day